Good evening. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Adel Ray. In the news this week, at a photo opportunity in the Midlands, Boris Johnson puts on a brave face after screwing his left foot to a plank of wood. <laughs> in Newcastle, after another surge in cases, students complain that the new isolation measures are a little too harsh. <laughs> And as he goes on another drive to prove that he's still alive, there's concern that Donald Trump shouldn't have had the second bleach injection. <laughs> on Ian's team tonight is a comedian from North Wales. We're very lucky to have her, not because she's always busy, but because she's the only Welsh person currently allowed out of the house. <laughs> Please welcome Kiri Pritchard-McLean. <laughs> And with Paul tonight is a former Minister of Education. Of course, that was before the government decided to replace that post with an algorithm that makes children cry by crushing their dreams. <laughs> Please welcome Nicky Morgan. <laughs> now, we begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Paul and Nicky, take a look at this. Yes. There's our fearless leader, Boris Johnson. He's arriving for his party conference speech to... Um, empty room. <laughs> Nicky, you know this man, don't you? I think he's, he's I, I made do. you barren, hasn't he? Uh, a baroness. A mess of something I don't know, Paul. Yeah. No, yeah. And he's been doing something. Has he been doing something? He's well. He's been trying to do something. Um, <laughs> yes. This is Boris Johnson's attempt to be upbeat in the face of endless barrage of misery, doom, and incompetence. He was speaking at a virtual Conservative Party conference this week. Did you see the virtual conference room? Anyway? No. It's an amazing yeah. virtual world. You could wander around like a really exciting video game, and there's like a foyer where you could have virtual chats with people. <laughs> Amazing. And even better, you could look at the picture of Dominic Raab saying, let's grasp the tremendous. <laughs> what, what does that mean? I don't know. Has anyone ever grasped his tremendous? I don't know. <laughs> I like the idea of a virtual conference, though, with virtual policies and virtually no one there and <laughs> <laughs> virtually no ideas. <laughs> Now, why are you looking at me? I was going to say, this is... This You're the is... only one of us who I'm guessing would be interested in this. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about the conference, they're showing the wrong uh, rooms because the room that is packed at party conference is the main hotel bar at all times of the day and night. Sometimes what, even... What, including this year? <laughs> well, no, not this year. <laughs> not this year. That is very true. But this year, they had to go online and it didn't work. I what you mean by, by work, Paul, in the sense of, did the speeches get delivered? Well, Ian, for a start. Get... <laughs> <laughs> so what's wrong with a name, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's wrong with it. I was just remembering that detail isn't this government's strong point. <laughs> <laughs> Mind-blowing though it was, the virtual conference couldn't really reproduce the thrills of a real conference like this one in 2017, when Matt Hancock decided to give the extraordinary live performance. <laughs> Can I congratulate you on stopping it there? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just imagining the bit before that where Matt Hancock is saying, testing, testing, <laughs> and nothing happens. <laughs> what does Boris Johnson want the UK to do? He wants us to be like Saudi Arabia. He wants us to be wearing masks and staying inside. <laughs> well, he wants the UK <laughs> to become the Saudi Arabia of wind. Oh, of course. Yes. Yeah, how silly of me. <laughs> There's a fartoir joke in there somewhere, isn't there? <laughs> well, there's a very massive hot air joke <laughs> for a <laughs> conference. Uh, yeah, it's not just wind power, though. There's a variety of zero-carbon energy options for Britain, which the Times explained in this very simple diagram. <laughs> it's an eco-friendly future in which we have very, very low carbon emissions because we have no industry. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
Uh, Boris Johnson was hit by the familiar accusation of there being no detail in his speech. But is it that important for the Prime Minister to know all the details, though? Is it that important? For a minute there, I thought you were going to say he was hit by the usual <laughs> accusation of what you're doing in my wife's bedroom. <laughs> 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 It wasn't that, so I'll, I, 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 wasn't. I, I withdraw yeah, right. my remark. <laughs> <laughs> it's an odd question. Of course the Prime Minister's meant to know something. Yeah. I mean, not all of it, maybe yeah. not much of it, but right. just bits <laughs> would be good. <laughs> well, look, let's have a look at him in action, shall we? Here's what happens if you ask for detail on hospital spending in Leeds. So how much are you spending in Leeds? And uh, there will be a, uh, a stream of funding uh, over the, uh, as I say, over the next uh, four or five years. But, but how much will Leeds get? Can you tell Leeds, us? Leeds, I can tell you, Leeds uh, General Hospital, Leeds, sorry, Leeds Children's Hospital Trust uh, is getting uh, centralising the children's adult service at Leeds General Hospital with pathology services at St James uh, and, and University Hospital Trust uh, in the University Hospital. It will be a, a big, big investment in Leeds Hospital. <laughs> I can't give you the, okay. give uh, me the number, somebody. Give it, who's got the number for Leeds? Let's, let's on, give me the number for Leeds. There's only two objects in that picture and only one of them is bright. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't this not perhaps long COVID? Because they say, don't they, that people who've had it, and he had it very seriously, as we remember, do suffer from sort of like, you know, you know memory lapses and... Failure to concentrate, failure to concentrate. inability to grasp detail. Yes. No, that was before he had it. Oh, was it? <laughs> uh, here's an interesting fact. According to Boris Johnson, which is the only country in Europe to have more fat people than the UK? Is it, is it ironically Finland? <laughs> <laughs> First time we've ever gotten a round of applause on Finland. Thank you very much. <laughs> Apparently it's Malta. Oh, yeah. Malta. Oh. Yeah. How do you make a Maltese cross? Uh, Take his pie off him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boris Johnson also said in his speech that Uncle Sugar won't pay for everything. Who's Uncle Sugar? Oh, does he mean Sugar Daddy? <laughs> yeah, right. Is it a it variation on the on the particular website? What's that, that all about then? I, I, I believe there's one called Sugar Daddy. Yes. Which helps you um, cut down your. your <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Cut down your intake of young women. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Is there another one called Auntie Two Lumps? <laughs> Apparently, he meant the nanny state, but he could have been talking about Rishi Sunak, of course, right? Oh. Yeah, OK. What has Rishi said about his political ambitions recently? He's actually said that he definitely doesn't want the PM's job. Uh, Nikki, will you back Rishi's coup against the Prime Minister? Oh, <laughs> I think that's what you might call a leading question. Uh, yes, it is a leading question. <laughs> I'd quite like an answer. No, 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 no. Rishi says he's, he's not interested in the, the job. I think we have a, we have a Prime Minister uh, doing the job at the moment and we will have to see, obviously, at some point, what happens in the future of the Conservative Party. <laughs> Conservative MPs are revolting, though, Nikki. Over what, exactly? This is over the 10pm curfew. Yes. Uh, amongst other things, actually. It's quite a rebellious uh, parliamentary party at the moment. And, uh, but the 10pm curfew in particular, I think they have a lot of very unhappy publicans in their constituencies. Mm. What do we think of the 10 pm curfew? Has it affected you, Ian, this 10 pm? Me? Oh, well, I'm gutted. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just halfway to getting completely bladdered. And then, <laughs> you know, out I go onto the pavement. The whole thing's a nightmare. What do you think they should do? The, the government says there's some science behind throwing everyone out at the same time. And other people say maybe there isn't. Keir Starmer's very keen that we should see the science. At one point, they were joined by Keir Starmer. Uh, he said that, uh, you know, they need these scientific arguments. and That's what he was looking for. Nick, he's really good, isn't he, Keir Starmer? <laughs> <laughs> that would be another leading question, you're, Adolf, you're, yeah. Yes, exactly, that's, what, that's what's going on, yeah. <laughs> Um, but, he, I mean, he is very good, isn't he? Well, I don't think he can quite decide exactly what he thinks at the moment. I mean, the Prime Minister also gave him a new nickname, didn't he? He's called him Captain Hindsight. Mm. Um, but he's still very good, though, isn't he? <laughs> 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 yeah, I think these political interrogation techniques are going to have to be honed yeah. a little bit more. We can just edit Nicky at the yeah? Should we be able to read the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Whereas no one has yet called Boris Captain Foresight, have they? <laughs> I'm not going there with names. <laughs> uh, according to reports, one in three shoppers are avoiding loose vegetables, but why shouldn't they? Is that an ITV programme? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what it turns into, I think. <laughs>
th there's more of a sort of a, a sort of revelation in the science this this week. There's been something about the coronavirus. There's been some it, sort of what well, the fact is not uh, now picked up from surfaces potentially. That's, that's right. The risk of COVID transmission through inanimate surfaces is very small. Oh, I didn't know that. It's good. Yes. Uh, that's good. According to the professor of microbiology, uh, Emmanuel Goldman, and he's backed by an Italian. Uh, scientific study, so you can throw away all your hand sanitizer and alcohol wipes. Yeah, I wouldn't throw them away just no. yet. <laughs> <laughs> also, it means that we can drink them once the pods kick us out of ten. Absolutely, absolutely right. Uh, among all their many problems, what was the last thing the government wanted to happen? The test and trace to go wrong. I think you're absolutely right. 16,000 positive test results went missing, meaning 50,000 contacts of those people were neither tracked nor traced. I mean, it's, it's a remarkable achievement. You spend £12 billion and then you have an Excel sheet that fails. <laughs> Nobody has ever spent more money on anything ever, <laughs> um, really, um, than this um, testing, tracing, tracking system, and it just doesn't work. Yet again, Matt Hancock comes out and says it's a glitch. I mean, that isn't the word. It's a monumental error. <laughs> Whoever they give it to, whichever friend picks up the contract for however much money, it just doesn't work. And then it didn't work again this week. Hmm. And people, you know, they're fairly fed up. I mean, and this isn't, you know, just in case the Director General's still watching, I'm quoting from The Telegraph this morning. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not a political issue, it's just being useless. <laughs> How did an official at Public Health England explain it? Uh, it was down to a combination of human error and IT. That is, a human using IT. It's fundamentally an IT error. But there is a bit of human error involved in this too. <laughs> yes, it was a spreadsheet error. Public Health England were using an Excel spreadsheet tool, but it was a version from 2007. You can only input 65,000 rows of data, and after that, the extra numbers just fall off the edge. Uh, now, spreadsheets are rife in the commercial world. Anyone got examples of this? Your top ten spreadsheet blunders, anyone? Can I tell you one? I could be listing my sexual partners in there and the contact details, so if anything happens, I can contact them more quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and has this spreadsheet crashed because it's too much <laughs> 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 This is Boris's speech to the virtual party conference. Boris told conference he had lost nearly two stone in recent months. Here's the Prime Minister before Covid, and here's the Prime Minister after Covid. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Kiri, take a look at this. That's a mask. <laughs> First time he's seen one. Yeah, you guys are getting it, all of you. Yeah. All of you. <laughs> and they applaud, great. <laughs> the privilege, sir. <laughs> Oh, it's the American Health Service. <laughs> <laughs> the mask comes, comes off. It comes <clears> off. <throat> Doesn't look well there, does he? No. <laughs> it's a funny colour. <laughs> he called his diagnosis uh, a blessing from God, and it's the first time I've ever agreed with him on anything. <laughs> <laughs> Trump does like to be the best at everything. So he succeeded. He, I mean, he literally is the best super spreader we have mm. on record. I mean, he's given it to more people than most countries now. <laughs> the poor guy that had to drive him in that car. Mm. Uh, you know, Trump is meant to be the master of the, uh, you know, the publicity shot and whatever. But when I see a dark black car driving very slowly down a street, <laughs> I often feel quite sorry for the occupant in the back. <laughs> <laughs> it did look like it, it looked like a rehearsal, really, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, this is Donald Trump, who was hospitalised after contracting coronavirus. Uh, this was last week. Doctors injected Trump with a potentially lethal cocktail of experimental and untested drugs, but somehow he pulled through. <laughs> you know, he's, he's on certain drugs which are hiding the symptoms, mm. potentially masking the symptoms, so we don't know where he's going to be on Monday, two days after this goes out, or the same night as the repeat. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> If we're wearing black armbands on the repeat, you'll know what's happening. <laughs> yeah, no, he's still with us. Mm. Uh... <laughs> Obviously, this dominated the news and it left editors all over the world trying to find the local angle. Here's how it was reported in the Air Advertiser. <laughs> <laughs> Turnberry Hotelier tests positive for coronavirus. <laughs> and in the Glasgow Live, 
Man who almost <laughs> bought Rangers test positive for COVID-19. <laughs> Whilst one film website went for, star of Home Alone 2 has tested positive for COVID-19. <laughs> So the news was announced uh, and the sort of mood and getting the idea of what it was like in the White House. One source told the New York magazine, at the best of times, Trump world operates with all the strategic direction of a chicken with its head cut off. But right now, they're operating like a chicken with its head cut off, lit on fire and thrown <laughs> off a cliff. <laughs> Is that what we get instead of bonfire now this year? <laughs> <laughs> It's quite unbelievable. There's now at least 34 people at the White House who have tested positive. Uh, many of the people who tested positive attended a gathering at the White House Rose Garden on the 26th of September for the nomination of Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court. Here they are at the event. And here's Republican Senator Mike Lee, no, not that one, at the event who subsequently tested positive. <laughs> We must point out that we didn't add that comedy music. <laughs> <laughs> so just on coronavirus, who do you think is going to get it next? <laughs> yeah. um, In the US sort of presidential world. Oh, I see. Not yes. Mrs Watkins at number 23. No. <laughs> 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 it seems to be unfair. Be very long list. Let me pick on somebody, you know. Um, who's who's get closest it? to Trump? Oh, Putin. <laughs> A bit of advice, I wouldn't go near Giuliani after looking at this. Mayor, you heard Joe Biden there. He says if the scientists <laughs> say it's OK, he is going to um, be up for the debate. The reality is, when I hear that response, <coughs> that Joe is going to listen to the experts. But when you look at the polls, and I know that, you, you know, everybody questions the polls, <laughs> but, but pretty consistently, um, Joe Biden does outperforms the president. Uh, Mayor Giuliani, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we'll look forward to having thank you back. You, and I hope that cough is not anything bad good. where you're waiting for your test to come back. So uh, we hope you're going to be healthy and well. I hope so, too. <laughs> <laughs> so once he was in hospital, what was Trump very keen to convey? A strength. Yeah. Um, fortitude, leadership. Yeah. That he wasn't in hospital. <laughs> <laughs> he was uh, very keen to say that he was working harder than ever. Here he is posing for pictures of him working. And that's in his... Oh. Yeah, and apparently... <laughs> in his hospital suite. Please. All he's doing there is writing his name. <laughs> that's absolutely true. It's nice to practice, though, isn't it? <laughs> now, he also released a video from inside the hospital to prove how well he was doing. Someone on his team used some very efficient editing software to edit out a cough. So many things have happened. If you look at the therapeutics, which I'm taking right now. Yeah. Let's, can we go closer in? Let's go closer in. You get a really good idea. It looks like a, like a hiccup, but actually it's a cough that they've edited out. If you look at the therapeutics, which I'm taking <laughs> right now. It looks like, like the like... bleach is coming back up. <laughs> <laughs> He said he was recently examined by a doctor and he said he was the perfect physical specimen. He just didn't say of what. <laughs> Why were the doctors criticised for some of their actions? I mean, they weren't entirely clear about what they were saying. You know, they, they wouldn't answer questions. They said, have you examined his lungs? Yes. And uh, what, what did you find? Oh, we, we found findings. <laughs> but they wouldn't say what those findings were. You know, I don't know, a golf ball? I mean, I don't know. What, <laughs> what did they find? And he says things like, uh, the patients reported no symptoms. Well, yeah, but what's your opinion? <laughs> <laughs> I feel great. Oh, yeah, well, that sounds good. <laughs> yes, the doctor was criticised for giving misinformation about whether the president had received oxygen. Mm -hmm. In one briefing, the president's doctor, Sean Conley, announced there was no cause for concern. And nothing says no cause for concern like bringing ten other doctors along. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like they're about to do a dance routine on, <laughs> on Britain's Got Talent. Yes. <laughs> or, well, a, or a bowling alley with a bizarre medical thing. <laughs> <laughs> One looks like he's borrowed his, like, dad's doctor's uniform. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Biodiversity! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, and Trump was treated with the strong steroid dexamethasone. Mm. Uh, how did the world know when the drug had kicked in? <laughs> it sort of encourages 
uh, a sense of mania uh, and a sense of real... Imp um, start considering the basis that he's starting from. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's extremely worrying. I should imagine a nuclear button just opened the curtains at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, his hospital room was decked out with bulletproof windows and bomb-proof doors and the nuclear button was placed by his bed. Oh, you were right. No. You were right. Yes. I bet when he pressed it, I was going... <laughs> <laughs> uh, what has Trump had a downer on this week? Virtual debate. Because mm. basically they proposed that the next debate between him and Biden should be done virtually and he refused to do it. It's either in person or not at all. Trump's not happy about it, tells Fox News. I'm not going to waste my time on a virtual debate. It's ridiculous. And then they cut you off whenever they want. Trump now says he's going to hold the rally at the same time instead. But are we going to see any of the, the vice presidential? Yes, I was going to ask you, who was the star of the show at the vice presidential debate <laughs> on Thursday? It was a fly yeah. mm. that landed on Mike Pence's very sort of well hairsprayed hair. And it was everyone was so thrilled by what was going on uh, that they were more interested in the fly. One person labelled the fly an American hero. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at this memorable picture <laughs> from the night. <laughs> People wondered why Mike Pence didn't just swat it. Presumably, he was worried it would lead to a massive rally by Black Flies Matter. <laughs> and finally, how have raccoons been causing mayhem at the White House this week? Chewing through some cables, mm. what they normally do. Are they staging pro-Trump rallies? <laughs> Apparently over the last week, a raccoon has attacked multiple news crews on the North Lawn, at one point even grabbing the trouser leg of one photographer. CNN's Joe Johns took the law into his own hands this week. Let's see how he dealt with it. Now, no events on the president's schedule today. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's a professional. Excellent. <laughs> this is the news of Donald Trump's miraculous recovery from COVID. Anyway, I think we've said enough about Trump. Let's not give him the oxygen, said one of the doctors. <laughs> now on to round two, the randomizer of news. Fingers on buzzers teams. <laughs> This is a story about people changing their accents, depending on what company they keep. Some scientists have worked out that people do this, whereas we all know everyone does this. Seems like an absurd idea. <laughs> <laughs> you really think there's anything in this? Yes, of course there is, Gov. <laughs> what, the, what the hell was that? <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was the worst since Dick Van Dyke in Mary Poppins. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> I'm really terrible for the changing accents thing. I, if I'm somewhere for sort of four or five days, I immediately pick up the accent. And you can tell where I've been based on my accent. So when I go back home to North Wales, I talk a bit like this because everyone from North Wales has got quite like a quick speaking accent. And then I've lived in Manchester for 10 years. So I found myself being like, you want me? <laughs> <laughs> and then I work a lot down in London. So I end up sounding unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, absolutely right. After studying 39 12-minute conversations with people from a range of backgrounds, researchers noted increased activity in a part of the brain that has been developed in order to help humans identify and overcome bias and prejudice when communicating. Here's the Times' utterly unhelpful explanation. It means that those prone to dropping their T's may aim for something more like BBC English in mixed company, whereas the blue-blooded may tone it down <laughs> around hoi polloi. <laughs> You know, amongst cabbies and work. <laughs> <laughs> BBC. Cup of tea. What is BBC English? Is it? Is it like, hello, welcome to the BBC? That's, that's it, yes. Exactly. Received English, RP. Yes, you know. exactly, that's the it. Qu uh, the Queen's English. Yeah, is she? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know as well as you do, <laughs> but I expect you've picked her up in your cab many a time. <laughs> God blow, me. God blow me, your anus, back in the pelly city. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, she's German. <laughs> <laughs> In other news, yeah. what have young people been blamed for this week? Nearly everything. I'll give you a clue. You watching? Mm. You watching? Yeah. yeah. Oh, 
Ooh. Young people don't know how to ask for the bill. And also, here's a great one. If you were trying to say, answer the phone or something, what, what mind would you do for phone? Yeah, young people do this because mm. the phone is completely different. They don't know what this is. Yeah. No one has a landline. So you just look mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but to be fair, though, Ian's mind for a phone would be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a mind for something else where I'm from. <laughs> Absolutely true, Kerry. Not understanding hand gestures is what young people have been blamed for this week. According to linguistics professor Viv Evans, hand signs based on older technology are likely to become obsolete because they make no sense to young people. They don't understand because what, they never pay the for it, do they? <laughs> 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 Which other hand signals are reportedly on their way out? Um, oh, yes. Would you like to release a pigeon? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, this one. What's that? It's time. time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's ask, on your phone. Ask, yeah. Asking for the time. Uh, and also, that. Well, because no one has any cash anymore. Yeah. In other money related news, uh, how did a lottery winner in Jamaica celebrate his recent surprise windfall? I mean, what would you do if you won $95 million? Wow. You know, it's, you know he didn't want his friends or family to find out he'd won $95 million, so he picked up the cheque dressed like this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got his name on it. We, we, we... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he, he came dressed as Darth Vader, uh, but now he's got a lot of people claiming he's their father. <laughs> <laughs> right, fingers on buzzers, teams. Oh, this is the Arsenal mascot. This is a very topical story that a dinosaur has been made extinct. <laughs> We're up with the news here. He's been sacked or been dropped as a mascot. Uh, this week, Arsenal decided to get rid of Jerry Key, who, for the last 27 years, has ah. won the popular Gunnosaurus costume at Arsenal Gunnosaurus. games. Gunnosaurus. Gunnosaurus. Oh, a, a, a pun, then. <laughs> <laughs> According to a club spokesperson, it yes. was part of cost-cutting measures in light of lost revenue during lockdown and came on the same day that Arsenal bought midfielder Thomas Party for £45 million <laughs> and agreed to pay him £220,000 a week. So how much was Gunnosaurus on? <laughs> um, who was most upset um, about this? Piers Morgan's an Arsenal fan, isn't he? Spot on. Piers Morgan led a backlash on Twitter against the sacking of Gunnosaurus. Here is the dinosaur posing with the mascot. <laughs> <laughs> now, while former Arsenal player Paul Merson got very serious and emotional about it all on Sky Sports News, have a look at this heartfelt plea. Seriously. Unbelievable. I mean, all them kids, all them Arth junior gunners and everything like that, I mean, mm. he's part of it now. I mean, there'll be 30-year-old people, 40-year-old fans who have grown up with that dinosaur. <laughs> Uh, how do you think The Sun covered the story? Did he do page three? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, they would have done this. They did a dinosaur footballer pun 11. Oh. Uh, any guesses of what they went for? Terry Butcher Dactyl. Oh! <laughs> You're you, you in the same ballpark. John Terry. In John Dactyl. Terry Dactyl. That works better. <laughs> that works better. <laughs> What about a manager, uh, a, a very well-known manager, one of the most famous managers oh, in the Premier Venable. League? Terry Dactyl Venables. <laughs> <laughs> Jürgen Triceroclops. That's dreadful. <laughs> oh, I don't feel so bad now about Terry Dactyl Venables. <laughs> so what does the future now hold for Gunnosaurus? Does it have a happy end? Is he still got a job? He does, yeah. yes. The club have now performed an embarrassing public climb down of government proportions. <laughs> an Arsenal <laughs> spokesperson said on Wednesday, Gunnosaurus is not extinct and will return to action when fans are allowed back at matches. Very good. Yeah. And finally, does anyone know what Exeter City footballer Alex Hartridge's goal celebration is? <laughs> no, no, but I'm sure you have an example of it. Oh, oh yes, we do. <laughs> do you? Brace yourselves. Uh, now, whenever someone scores for Exeter, they yes. put the player's individual goal celebration video on Twitter. Here's Alex's provocative effort. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if he scores too many goals, he'll go blind. He knows that. 
<laughs> yes, this is the story. The Arsenal were planning to make their mascot, Gunnosaurus, redundant in a cost-cutting exercise. According to The Sun, Gunnosaurus is so dedicated to his work that he once missed his brother's wedding. What, 47 million years ago? <laughs> Fingers on buttons. Oh, this is devastating news. Is that your dog can't see your face. It just sees a shape. Isn't that just so distressing? Because it means I've been making the effort for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, they can't tell the difference between the back of your head and the front of your head, which is quite frankly offensive. <laughs> <laughs> how, how can they tell this? How can they tell it? A dog can't tell the difference between the back of your head and the front of your head. Well, they, uh, I think they put them in an MR... They did some research and put some dogs in an MRI scanner and showed uh, them pictures of faces yes. and they'd wired up their brains and they could see how the dog ah, reacted. Yeah, right, uh, I see. Well, well, let's have a look. Researchers put 30 Mexican dogs into an MRI machine and measured their response to pictures of faces as this handy diagram in The Times shows. Here's what happens when a human looks at a face. <laughs> OK? <laughs> yes. Right? And here's what happens... When a dog looks at a face. <laughs> <laughs> Explains it so well, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Researchers told The Guardian a dog's brain is just as excited about the back of our heads as the front. <laughs> so how do dogs tell us apart then? What is it that they... they... Smell. Mm. They do mm. know what our distinctive scents are. <laughs> yeah, according to Professor Sophie Scott, dogs know who their friends are by smelling them. Uh, dogs might not be able to tell who their owners are, but they can definitely spot when they're being tricked by them, though. Let's have a look at this little video. dog. <laughs> That's what I was like when I was on a restrictive diet as well. <laughs> <laughs> this is the story from the Journal of Neuroscience that dogs are actually not that good at recognising human faces, presumably after a series of lab tests. <laughs> so bad. I think I preferred Gunnosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Just one between you this week. Your four are Jill Biden, Lewis Hamilton, Marie Antoinette, and Benjamin Netanyahu. OK, Jill Biden... This is the only thing I can think. Jill Biden used to be a model when she was younger. Yeah. And Marie Antoinette was, like, a teen heartthrob of her Yeah, time. she was definitely a model a, queen. A babe, yeah. Lewis Hamilton, I feel, would have modelled something. Mm. He's, he's, like, really young and successful mm. and good-looking. But I don't know what Benjamin Netanyahu would have modelled. He modelled settlements on the West Bank. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh contra... <laughs> have you just heard? <laughs> um, there's something about the clothing. They all wore their heads until they were cut off. <laughs> <laughs> well, all of them. <laughs> Except the other three. <laughs> have they designed a range of clothing or something? No. What, the, the Marie Antoinette range? <laughs> <laughs> Is uh, Benjamin Netanyahu? Are you? He's the only one that's showing the hand signal for there's an ostrich nibbling in my testicles. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask kids, they wouldn't know what that hand gesture is. No, they wouldn't. <laughs> I'll tell you. They've, yeah. they've all been criticised for clothing they've worn, apart from Benjamin Netanyahu, who was criticised for getting his clothes washed for free. Oh, through his wife's business. No. Who's been washing the Prime Minister of Israel's clothes? Uh, his mistress. Think of a bigger, in a big institution. We were talking about it earlier in the show. ICI. No, we were talking about them earlier in the show. Oh, is it Saudi Arabia? No. Saudi Arabia washes clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Things yeah. are moving in the Middle East. <laughs> oh, boy. No wonder it's a complicated process. <laughs> trying to find peace. Uh, who's been washing the Prime Minister of Israel's clothes? The American government. Last week, the Washington Post revealed that whenever Netanyahu visits the US, he turns up at the White House with at least four or five suitcases full of clothes to be laundered. Oh, my God, like a student coming up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the record, the BBC lawyers would like us to point out that Benjamin Netanyahu denies taking dirty laundry to the White House, but it's much funnier to say that he did. 
<laughs> What's Jill Biden being criticised for wearing? The same, same dress outfit. twice? Uh, no. Too glamorous a dress? It's these $750 boots uh, with the word vote written on them as she went to cast her early vote for the presidential election. She's not the first American political figure to have words written on her footwear, though in George Bush's case, it was just left and right on the toe caps. <laughs> <laughs> what did world champion Lewis Hamilton do to upset Formula One bosses? Oh, did he have a Black Lives Matter? It was a message related to Black Lives Matter. Uh, in protest at the death of Breonna Taylor, who was killed by police in America this year, Formula One have now tweaked their race day rules to state that drivers must remain attired in their team uniforms. What was Marie Antoinette criticised for wearing? Oh, she wore a, a silver dress. I mean, her, her outfits were deemed extravagant. Though a lot of it was made up. Oh, really? Did she not live lavishly then? No, I mean, I mean, she did live lavishly by normal standards, but a lot of the really hyped up reports just weren't true. Oh, really? And the cake thing wasn't true either. So she wasn't sponsored by Mr Kipling? <laughs> <laughs> No, and she wasn't on Bake Off either. No. <laughs> Head off, but not Bake Off. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, they've all been criticised for clothing they've worn, apart from Benjamin Netanyahu, who is criticised for getting his clothes washed for free. Lewis Hamilton famously drives a Mercedes, the only black man who can do that without being stopped by the police. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words Round, which this week features as its guest publication, Cloven Hoof, the <laughs> newsletter of the Cornwall Goatkeepers Association. <laughs> it's a perfect publication for all the family with a special pullout for kids. <laughs> what bozo picked this magazine for this week? <laughs> this production's riddled with bozos. <laughs> I mean, if you saw some of the people who worked on this show, you'd think it was a bozo parade. <laughs> And we start with David Cameron was a regular what in the 80s? Verb. <laughs> Reader of Goat Weekly, whatever it's called, Cloven Hoof. Socialist Workers' Party rallies. <laughs> David Cameron was a regular on the acid rave scene in the 80s. <laughs> this week it was claimed that while a student, David Cameron liked attending rave events in Oxford. Of course, the worst Tory MP to have at a rave is Gavin Williamson. He'll tell you he's bringing a load of E's, and then at the last second, he'll give you an F. <laughs> Next, I have fond memories of late nights in the goat barn. What? It says Laughing Cow in new tell-all memoir. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I wish it was that, but I'm afraid it's not. <laughs> I have fond memories of late nights in the goat barn, waiting to meet new members of the herd. <laughs> <laughs> Next, the judge of this year's dairy class at the livestock show will be what? On ketamine. <laughs> Is it Baroness Hale? <laughs> Via Zoom? <laughs> we'll be on, on Zoom. I'm sure that's what Nikki just yes, said. Oh, did you say? I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> the judge of this year's dairy class at the livestock show will be Adrian Bull. Ah. Thanks to the judging of Adrian Bull, best in show Pygmy was. Ghislaine Mamba, and reserve was Ghislaine Sprite, whilst the winner of Worst in Everything was Ghislaine Maxwell. <laughs> <laughs> Next, rare orange what after chance discovery? President sacked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rare orange lobster rehomed after chance discovery. <laughs> and here it is. It's been nicknamed Donald, presumably because it's bright orange and you've yep. got to steer clear of its hands. <laughs> and finally, Madonna refused to work with what after he revealed what? Madonna refused to work with Alan Titchmarsh after he revealed... <laughs> his onions. After he revealed his onions, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Worth a point, isn't it? Madonna refused to work with DJ David Guetta after he revealed his star sign. David Guetta is a Scorpio and Madonna Leo, so as neither of them are Capricorns, this story was a zero interest to the editor of the Goat Keepers <laughs> newsletter. <laughs> Not the only ones. <laughs> <laughs> so the final scores are Ian and Kiri have four, and Paul and Nikki have four! Hey. Oh. <laughs> Very good. Still got nothing to laugh. <laughs>
But before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. Oh, Sebastian, I love the fact you're nine foot nine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say it next week, no matter what the caption is. <laughs> <laughs> next, next. Government announced new track and trace system. Very <laughs> <laughs> good. On which we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Kiri Pritchard-McLean, Paul Merton and Nicky Morgan. And I leave you with news that at Highgrove, amid rumours of marital strife, it looks like someone's sleeping in the chicken coop tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Recently issued publicity photos demonstrate the sheer unbridled joy of coming into work at the Home Office. <laughs> And in London, there's embarrassment on a new celebrity version of Blind Date, as contestant number one struggles with the question, what's your name and where do you come from? <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs>